In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural dented metal material. If you'd like to purchase this material, then I will have links in the description where you can purchase the project files on my Gumroad store, and you also get access to my procedural materials if you join my Patreon page. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are also great ways to help support me and this channel. And another great way to help support the channel is by checking out my Blender procedural material packs. So I create packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. And every time I create another 10 materials, I add them to a procedural material pack. So I'll have the links in the description where you can check out my procedural material packs on my Gumroad store. And that's also a great way to help support me and this channel. And if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. Again, links in the description. So let me just show you how I set up my Blender file. So what I did is I pressed Shift A and I went here to Mesh and I added an Icosphere. And then right when you add the Icosphere right behind me, you can open up the Add Icosphere settings. And I turned up the subdivisions really high to like a six so that I have a nice smooth sphere just to preview the material on. And then I also shaded the object smooth. And then to get some nice bright lighting, I added in these two plane lights right here. So this is just a circle and then this is just like a long plane and I added emission materials to them so that we get some nice bright lighting on this object. And then because this material is made out of metal, it's gonna be pretty reflective. And so to make it very realistic, it's good to have a nice HDRI lighting to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections. So over here on the world, I added in this Photo Studio 01 1K HDRI, and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. So if you'd like to use the same HDRI that I'm using, the link is in the description and I just added this in as an environment texture here in the world and then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial so if you don't have that enabled you can just click on edit and then you can open up the preferences and then right over here on the add-ons tab if you go over to the search you can search for the node wrangler add-on and you can just check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video so you can just close the user preferences now all right so I have the 3d view right here and I am in the render preview and then I have the shader nodes right over here so I'm just going to click on new and then I'm just going to rename this to procedural dented metal all right so to start off let's press shift a I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture so let's click on the noise texture and drop it right down here and then because we turned on the node wrangler add-on I can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes and that is going to preview the node on the object now I also want to select the noise texture and then with it selected I'm going to press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping but we don't need the mapping because the mapping just changes the location rotation and scale of the texture I don't need to do that so I'm going to select the mapping and press X to delete it and then let's take the object and I'm going to put that into the vector and the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly so now I want to play around with the noise texture so on the scale here I'm going to change this to a 4 and then I want to be very detailed, so let's drag the detail all the way to the max, which is 15. So I can now take this factor value and I can plug the factor value into the base color of the principle and then I can control shift and select the principle to preview it. So now the noise texture is going to affect the base color. Now this doesn't look at all like metal and that's because we need to turn up the metallic value. So we're gonna take the metallic value and turn that all the way up to one and it is now treated as a metallic material. And it does look quite a bit more like metal. We can also turn this roughness value down a bit and now it is more shiny. Now, I don't want it to be this bright because this is very, very bright. So I want to edit the colors of the noise texture before it goes into the base color. So to do this, I'll press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp. So let's click on the color ramp and I'm going to drop it right in here between the noise texture and the principle. And then if you'd like to, you can control Shift and select it to preview it. So now we can change the colors in here and that is going to affect the base color. So I can click on this 
this white tab right here. Let's click on this color and I'm gonna bring this down and make it more gray because I want the metal to be a bit darker. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using on this gray value, if you go to the hex value, you can put in a hex value of six, six times. So that is the gray color that I'll be using. And then let's also click on this black tab right here. I don't want this to be fully black. So I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna make it a bit brighter, but it's still gonna be pretty dark. And if you want to use the exact color that I'm using, you can go over to the hex value and I'm going to type in a hex value of 2A, 2A, 2A. That's the exact color that I'll be using. And then I do want to make this a little bit more contrasty so I can actually drag these tabs and you can see that it's going to be a bit more contrasty. And if I drag this further into the center, it's also going to get a bit brighter. So I'm just going to bring it to about there. So I can now control shift and select the principal BSDF. And you can see we now have a nice dark metal. Now I also want the roughness to be a little bit random because right now it's evenly rough all over the metal. So what I'm going to do is take the factor from the noise texture and I'm going to plug that into the roughness value. So you can now see that some parts are more rough whereas other parts are more shiny. Now I want to have more control over this so let's press shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I'm going to drop it right here between the noise texture and the roughness and then just drag it over here under this color ramp. So we can now change the colors of the color ramp and that'll change how rough or shiny the metal is. So I'm going to click on the black tab and I'm going to drag it over a little bit and you can see when I drag it over it's going to be more and more shiny. Now I don't want it to be that shiny but I do want it to be a bit more shiny so I'll just drag this to kind of right there. So you can now see some parts are more rough but then other parts are more shiny and that is a pretty nice metal. Now the metal is still very smooth and it isn't bumpy at all. So I also want to take the noise texture and I want to plug that into the normal to give it some bump. So let's take the factor right here and I'm going to plug Plug this into the normal. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues when we do that and that is because we need to convert this to normal data because this factor value this is just black and white data but this needs to be normal data you can see it is a purple dot so we need to convert the black and white data into normal data. So to do this I'm going to press shift A let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's click on the bump node and I'm going to drop it right in here between the noise texture and the principal. And then we actually want to take the factor and we want to put that into the height value. So that is going to convert the black and white data into normal data. You can see it goes in as a gray dot, but then it comes out as a purple dot. And so that's actually data now that the principled shader can use. Now you can see it's very, very bumpy and that is like way too bumpy. So I want it to be much less bumpy. So on the strength value right here, I can just change this value to like a 0.1, just change it to a 0.1. And now if I zoom in there, you can see it is much less bumpy. It still is a little bit bumpy, but not too crazy. Now I also want to control this a little bit better, so I'm going to add a color ramp in here as well. So I'm going to take this color ramp right here, just select this color ramp, and I'm going to press Shift D, and Shift D is going to duplicate the node. And I'm going to stick it right here before the bump node, so stick it right there, and I'm going to put it underneath these other color ramps. So I can now play around with this color ramp, and that's going to affect the bump. So I'm going to drag this tab right over here, and then I actually want to make it a little bit brighter. So let's take this color and I'm going to make it a bit brighter. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can type in a hex value of B3, B3, B3. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. And then I'm going to take this darker tab and I'm going to drag it over a little bit. And then if you want to use the exact color that I'll be using over here on the hex value, I'm going to be using a hex value of 4C, 4C, 4C. And I'll just drag this over a little bit farther so now it's a little bit more contrasty. So now if I zoom in here you can see some parts are just a little bit more smooth like right there but then some parts are a bit more rough like right there. Alright so we now have a really nice basic metal material. Now I want to make dented metal and so I want to add more values into the bump here to make it look like it's dented. So to do this I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. So you can type in VOR 
and then add the Voronoi texture. And I'm gonna drop the Voronoi texture right down here under the noise texture. And then to preview it, I can control shift and select the Voronoi texture. And then I wanna use the object coordinates as well. So let's take the object and we're gonna put that into the vector of the Voronoi. So we're gonna use all these little dots here on the Voronoi texture to make the metal kind of bumpy and look like it's been dented. So right here on the Voronoi texture settings, I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change this to smooth F1. And that way you can see that it's much more smooth there between those dots. Now I don't want it to be super smooth. I just want it to be a little bit smooth. So let's turn this smoothness value down and I actually want to change this smoothness value to a 0.3. So now it is pretty smooth, but not super, super smooth. So I now want to take this Voronoi texture and I want to plug it into the normal as well to give it some bump. So we can actually mix different bump maps together. So I can take this bump node, just select it, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to drop it right here after this bump node. So this bump node has already converted the noise texture into bump data. So now the normal can just go through the normal, but we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. So let's take the distance value from the Voronoi, and we're going to plug a wire into the height value. So now we are mixing multiple bump maps together. So I can control shift and select this bump node. You can zoom in and see what it's doing. And then I can control shift and select this bump node. And you can see that it's making all these little dents along the metal. Now I want this bump node to be a little bit stronger. So on the strength value right here, I'm just going to change this to like a 0.15 and that way it's a little bit stronger. Now you could have the dents going in if you like that. I'm going to control shift and select the principal BSDF. Just drag this material output right back here. You could do that if you wanted to and that way it's going to make the dents going in. But I want it to look a little bit more lumpy. So I'm actually going to hit the invert button. And that way now those dents are actually kind of coming out in the middle but then they're kind of dented and going back in there on the sides. So really just personal preference, you could invert it if you want to. I am going to turn on the invert, but you don't have to if you like it better without the invert. All right, so that looks much more dented now, but I also want to give some little scratches all over the metal just to make it look like it's more worn. So let's take this noise texture and I'm going to press Control Shift D. So normally if you press Shift D, that will duplicate the node, but if you press Control Shift D, that's it's going to duplicate the node, but it's going to keep the wires plugged up to it. And I'm going to bring the texture coordinate down. So the object is going into the vector. And then to preview this noise texture, I'm going to control shift and select it to preview it. All right, so now we can change the noise texture settings. So I'm going to leave the scale at four and the detail to 15. I do want to add a little bit more roughness though. So let's turn the roughness value to like a 0.6. So now it has a bit more roughness. Now I want to make this look like scratches. So how we can do that is we can turn up this distortion value. So you can see as I turn up the distortion value, it has all these little swirls here. So I'm going to turn the distortion value to a value of four. And now you can see it has all these little swirls. Now I don't want there to be scratches all over the place. I want to make it more contrasty. So we're going to be using another color ramp node to make it more contrasty. So I can actually take this color ramp right here, the one in the middle, and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to stick it right here after this noise texture, just put it right there and then the viewer node is already plugged up to it so we can preview what it's doing so I'm gonna bring this right over here and then I can drag this over and then I can take the white tab and I can drag it over so this way it's going to be much more contrasty and I want to be able to see those black areas better so let's drag this black tab over as well and now you can see that it's very contrasty and I want to bring them even closer together so I'll bring the white tab over and the black tab over just kind of to about here so now we have all these little scratches and they're very detailed. If you zoom in there, you can see there's a lot of detail. So I now want to plug this into the normal as well. So let's click on this bump node. I'm just going to bring it over and then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to drop it right in here between these two bump nodes. So just drop it right there and that's going to plug it up. So the normal can just go through the normal and then this normal can go through the normal, but we now have another height value right here that we can add data into. So let's take this color from the color ramp and we're going to 
put that into the height value. And then to preview it, I can control shift and select it to preview it. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see because we have the invert turned on, those scratches are actually popping out, but I instead want them to be going back into the metal. So I'm going to uncheck the invert and that way now they look like they're going back in. And then I don't want them to be very strong. So let's turn the strength value down just to like a 0.1. So now you can see there's all these little scratches. And if I go right up here and control shift and select the principled BSDF, kind of zoom out here, you can now see that there's little scratches here and there. So like right there, you can see there's some little scratches there and there's some subtle scratches right around there. So that just makes the metal look more worn out. All right, now I want to add one more layer of dents. I want to add some chunky dents. I want to make it almost look like someone took a hammer and kind of hit the metal at different angles and kind of make it look like there were some chunky dents into the metal. So to get this effect, I'm going to click on this noise texture and I'm going to press Control Shift D. That will duplicate it with the node plugged up and I'm going to put the Voronoi texture right down there. And let's just bring the texture coordinate down and then I can Control Shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. So to get the effect that I'm going for, I'm going to click on the Smooth F1 and I'm going to change this to F2. And when I change that to F2, you can see the texture that it's giving us and we can use this to create those dents. Now you can see that this Voronoi texture is pretty smooth and those lines are very smooth. And so I want to use another texture to distort the Voronoi texture. So let's click on this noise texture and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to stick it right here before the Voronoi texture. So this way the object coordinates from the texture coordinate is going through the noise texture and that is going to distort the vector. So basically this noise texture is distorting the placement of the Voronoi texture. And you can see now it looks much more random. Now I don't want it to be quite that random because that's pretty crazy. So I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to the search and let's search for a mix RGB node. And I'm going to drop the mix RGB node right here after the noise texture. So this noise texture right here is going to go into color two, but then we want the original object texture coordinates to be going into color one. So now I can just play around with this factor to either use the noise texture or just the normal object coordinates. So if I turn it up all the way to one, now you can see it's using that noise texture completely and that is super distorted. But if I turn the factor all the way to zero, now it looks very smooth. So I just wanna turn this up a little bit just so that it's slightly noisy. So let's turn the factor value to like a 0.2. And then let's also take the roughness here on this noise texture and I'm gonna turn it down to like a 0.5 so it doesn't quite have as much roughness. And then on this Voronoi texture here, I also want to make this a bit bigger. So let's turn the scale right here up to like a value of 11. So that's bigger. And this factor value right here, I want this to be set to a 0.2. I think a 0.2 looks pretty good. Now you can see that this still looks pretty distorted. And that is because there is this distortion value turned up on the noise texture. So let's turn this distortion value all the way to zero. So it's not very distorted. So now if I zoom in here, you can see it's really keeping the shape of the Voronoi texture much better. You can see if I turn the factor all the way to zero, now that is just using the object coordinates. But then if I turn this up to just like a 0.2, now it's just adding a tiny little bit of noise on the Voronoi texture. All right, now I want to make this more contrasty as well. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I can drop it right here after the Voronoi texture. And then to make it more contrasty, I'm just going to take the white tab and I'm going to drag this way over over so it's more contrasty. If I dragged this back over here and made it not as contrasty, there would be tons of dents all over the place, but I just want there to be a few dents here and there. So I'm gonna drag this over and that's gonna make it more contrasty. So there's just a few dents here and there. So now I wanna add this into the bump as well. So let's take this bump node and I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate it and let's just drop it right here after that bump node. And then what we wanna do is we wanna take this color ramp, we wanna take the color and let's put that into the height value to convert it to normal data. And then I can control shift and select this bump node to preview it. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see that it looks like those dents are actually popping out. And so I need to turn off the invert. And that way, now you can see those dents there look like they're going in. And then I do want to make them just a little bit stronger. So let's turn this strength value to like a 0.2. So it's just a little bit stronger. All right. So now I can control shift and select the principled BSDF and we can preview that material. And one more 
more thing that I want to do. I don't know why this happened again, but the factor is at 0.1 and I want to change the factor on the mix here to a 0.2. So now if I zoom in there, you can see those look more distorted. If I turn this all the way down, you can see it just looks like these little like moon shapes or kind of like eyes. I want to take the factor and I want to turn that to a 0.2 and that way it is much more distorted. All right, so there we have it. So there is the finished procedural dented metal. So I'll just give this a final render now. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and you can also get access to all of my procedural materials if you join my Patreon page. And those are both great ways to help support me and this channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. All the links are in the description. But I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.